Welcome fellow homebrewers and friends and today it is episode 2 of Brew Day where we will be bottling the Amber Waves American Amber Ale we brewed in episode 1. So if you haven't seen that, go to the link in the description below and go watch that and come back and I will show you how to bottle your homebrew. Just some starting assumptions. I've assumed that you haven't really spent a lot of money on bottling gadgets and tools. There really are quite a few you could purchase which will make your bottling day easier than the one I'm about to show you. For now, let's keep things simple and I'm only gonna be using the auto siphon for today, but in future episodes, I am definitely gonna show you some of these nifty devices you can use to make bottling easier. As always, preparation is essential to avoid frustration. Okay, there is our bottle capper. Ooh, looks a little bit rusty, I better get a new one. And uh, let's look at some of the other things I've got. I've got my trusty spray bottle and my bottling bucket, which is filled with uh, no rinse sanitizer. There's my priming sugar, more about that a little bit later. I've got it ready. Yep, I've got my bottle caps washed and now they're being sterilized. The little clip in there is for my auto siphon onto bottles and I filled mine with no rinse sanitizer. I'm going to be using about 11 440s for this recipe. A note about glass. Avoid green and clear glass. Brown is better. It will protect your beer from UV. And if you're going to be using labeled bottles, remove those labels if it's not your own. Take pride in your work, man. Alrighty. I'm just going to put my auto siphon in the uh, sanitizing liquid as well. I've been spraying it as well throughout uh, this preparation, so I'm pretty sure it is well sanitized. And I've also passed some sanitizer through the auto siphon. On to priming. We want to prime because we want to carbonate our beer. And we're going to be using priming sugar for that. You'll be pouring in about 100 mils of, uh, or 200 mils of brew water. And I am just gonna bring it up to the boil. And before it starts boiling, I'm going to be putting my sugar in. I'm using 33 grams of glucose or corn sugar. You could be using 50 grams of DME instead. Just mix it in there a little bit, twirl it around, let it, uh, you know, you don't want it to burn. That's the one thing you don't want. You don't want the stuff to burn to the bottom of the pot. So keep an eye on it. We're going to bring it gently up to a boil. Um, I should probably use a spoon. So just stir it in until it becomes nicely mixed in with the water. And you'll see that it sort of, you know, dissolves pretty quickly, especially if you're using glucose or corn syrup. That's really the preferred... Um, priming sugar for me it doesn't change the taste very much DME can sometimes make you be a darker that's why I tend not to use it and you want to boil this for at least 10 minutes to make sure everything is nice and sterile just mixing it in some more making sure that it doesn't burn to the bottom and then I'll leave this on a low simmer once it's been boiling for 10 minutes ready to go time to get our fermenter ready to siphon the beer into our bottling bucket. So I've put the fermenter on top of a, another big bucket just to get a little bit of gravity going. Always helps. And now I am going to take the lid off. It is a little bit tight, so it can be a bit tough to get off sometimes, but I'll persevere. And uh, the stuff you see there on the top of the lid on the inside, these are spent yeast cells and a little bit of hops probably, all part of the Krausen which is a result of fermentation. It shows that we had a good fermentation, by the way. We've put our bottling bucket into the wash basin just to catch any spillage and obviously poured out all the sanitizer. And now we'll be pouring in our priming solution. What we'll do now is put the siphon into the fermenter on top and the outlet into the... Oh, got a bit uh, got a bit wild there. I'm going to spray that just to make sure. That's why you need the spray bottle handy. So I'm going to put the uh, tube into the priming solution and I've started the siphon and you can see the fermented beer is now running into the bottling bucket and mixing in nice and swirly. That's a real world word. Beer. That is real beer. It's fermented and everything. So it's mixing into the uh, the priming sugar into the bottling bucket. 
and speed things up a little bit. And when we're done, you don't want to really uh, siphon any of the tube at the bottom of the uh, fermenter into this. So you want to stop short of that. And there is the spent yeast. Now you could recycle this. You could wash this and use it again. That will be a topic for a future episode. On to racking, which is moving the beer from one place to another. I've taken out the sanitizer off out of my beer bottles and now I'm going to be racking my beer, which has been mixed in with sugar on the bottling bucket. So the bottling bucket is now where the fermenter used to be. I'm gonna start the order siphon and Make sure that that tube is right at the bottom of your bottle. You want to fill from the bottom up. That's really, really important. And I, I just pinch with my hand when it gets close to the top. Uh, there are little gadgets you can use, but yeah, uh, there we go. Pinch it and pull it out and onto the next bottle. So this is a little bit of a tricky operation, but what if you kind of build a rhythm, it should be fine. And you will pinch the tube closed when the beer has reached the top, the very top of the bottle. Why? Because when you pull out the tube, that volume it used to take up is just about the right volume which you want underneath the bottle cap. Okay, so on to the next one. And you're just going to be doing this. This is obviously far easier if you have a buddy. I'm doing this on my own. And as you fill, put on the little beer caps, the crown caps, just to make sure that nothing drifts in there. No wild yeast or pet hair or beard hair in my case. Okay, they're all nicely filled up now. And I'm um, just going to spray it one more time for safety's sake. On to capping. And you're really just going to put it on there. Remember, it's got a little magnet. Look, it's captured the cap nicely. You're going to place it on there and you're going to apply some force. Now, this is a bit of an old capper, so I'm going to use a lot more force than probably necessary. And pro tip, don't put your camera there because it's going to make it into a shaky cam. Check whether the seal is crimped all the way around. Sometimes it's a little misaligned, so you may have to remove the cap and do it again. But mostly, it's super easy. And that's it, folks. Now we're going to age this beer for 10 days at about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. It's going to be naturally carbonated by the yeast and the priming sugar. And then, after 10 days, stick it in the fridge for a couple of hours and you're going to open your very first home brewed beer. Hell yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video, please. It does help me make more of these for you. If you have suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, drop them in the comments below. Now, go and bottle that damn beer of yours already.